control that again without the iron that, 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 <laughs> That's as good as it gets, right? Okay. Yeah. It got a bit more, more to yeah, it does, uh, yeah. <laughs> oh dear. Hi, my name is Dean Gray and I'm Brand and Communication Strategist at Grey Matter. Over the years I've worked with a range of companies, big and small, that have invested in brand as a key driver for sustainability and growth. The process we go through from the outset involves a Q&A and a discovery phase that interestingly reveals common questions and the same misconceptions. So I'd like to share some of these insight with you to help with your own understanding of brand and to help demystify the branding process. The topics we're going to cover are what a brand is, importantly what a brand isn't, what the building blocks of a brand are, what is brand architecture, why invest in brand or a rebrand, how long does the process take and how much do you need to invest and finally what do we put our own successes down to. A brand describes the experience everyone will have when they come into contact with your organisation. It will form the fundamental principles of your culture and a promise to the market you are serving. A promise that you need to fulfil at every touch point. It will be reflected in your daily activities and the way you deliver products, services and solutions consistently through a focus on excellence and shared values. It's important to remember that it's the service that creates the experience, the experience that then creates the reputation and it's the reputation that becomes your brand. The only elements that you have any credible control over is the service and the experience. The reputation, and therefore the brand perception, is in the hearts and minds of your customers. One point of confusion is when a business thinks it needs a visual identity, when what it actually needs is a brand, or vice versa. These are not the same thing. Your brand will define your centre of excellence, both for your internal culture and your marketing. Once you have defined your brand, then you have the foundations to develop your visual and verbal identity. If you jump straight in and design your logo and visual identity, you will have the tool to deliver visual consistency across Marcoms, but not a defined brand that will help you defend, sustain and grow your business. For example, there's a trend through LinkedIn of business publishing a range of logos to crowdsource feedback and ask people to choose their favourite. How can you do this without knowing what the company stands for? Now remember that it's your service that will create the experience. It's the experience that will shape your reputation and your reputation will become your brand. So it should come as no surprise that the building blocks of any brand have a tangible purpose in building trust and loyalty. These building blocks are your vision, what you aspire to be. This will provide direction and inspiration for the journey ahead. Your mission, what are you going to do to realise the vision? This will provide operational focus and purpose. Your proposition, what are you selling? This will align with customer needs you've identified. Why are you different? This will make you stand out from the competition. Your values, what are the reasons to believe in the brand? This will become trust when it's experienced and evidenced. Your personality, how do you think and feel? This will give prospects and customers an emotional connection. And lastly, behaviours. How do you conduct business? This will inform your character. There are basically six key frameworks that you can use for brand architecture. The main ones are a corporate master brand. This is where the source of your brand emanates from the standards and values of your company. Think IBM or Microsoft. Sometimes this is referred to as a branded house. This scenario is usual, but not exclusive to the B2B space. Conversely, you might want to have a house of brands which is entirely product focused and doesn't reference the business as a source of the brand at all. Think of Unilever and Procter & Gamble. This framework is used when you have a portfolio of products that require clear differentiation and a distinct weighting in the market you are servicing. This is usually found in the B2C or the FMCG space. The third framework is for an umbrella brand where you have a group of diverse businesses driven by the same values. Virgin is a great example here. Think of Virgin Holidays, Virgin Atlantic, Virgin Mobile, Virgin Money, etc. We all know that these are distinctly different businesses, but all driven through the same customer-first ethos. Now, some brand strategies are a combination. A good example of this is Lexus, where Toyota wanted a new stealth brand, Lexus, to fly the flag for their luxury cars by not diluting the core values of the company brand. The most important thing is, 
to choose the right architecture so it can support the growth of your business. Put simply, ask yourself where the source of your brand values come from in servicing the market you are selling to. To decide on what brand architecture is most relevant to your organisation, it's best to start at the end and ask yourself what success looks like. Do you need to change market perception? Are you moving into a different value space? Are you a startup looking to disrupt the market? Have you merged or demerged? Looking for global growth and maturity? Moving into a new market? Addressing market clarity or lack of differentiation? The answer to the question, what does success look like, will inform both the brand architecture and brand strategy, as both need to support your business plan. This is the million dollar question, and from experience there's rarely a million dollars on the table. Using our eight step brand roadmap, we can quickly identify where we need to focus our strategic thinking and resources as well as our tactical efforts. So this will deliver maximum value for your budget. Best practice tells us that defining the relationship between the client team and the grey matter project team is vitally important. We do this through a racing model, defining who needs to be responsible, accountable, consulted or informed through the process on both sides. In addition to this, we'll also use our quality management system and robust project management to ensure stages are delivered on time. Our mantra is never skimp on project rigour. It will pay dividends throughout the project lifecycle. Because we can be selective with the steps in our eight step roadmap, we can deliver brand initiatives from 30K to 300K plus in timelines ranging from a few weeks to many months. But our approach to delivering excellence is consistently the same regardless of budget. It's fair to say that every project is unique as no business is the same. For Advanced we delivered a new name and brand that supported a massive transformation programme, aligning 13 business units under a unified brand in under 12 weeks. This was achieved through an agile learn, review, refine process. For the rebranding of Comap in Prague it took almost nine months as we included an educational programme that included every function of the business at every key stage. This involved nearly 40 meetings and workshops with over 160 attendees as well as international distributor workshops with Comap's global network. To maximise on your investment and timely delivery of your brand, make sure you use tried and tested frameworks and a methodology that manages all stakeholders. Branding is an emotive subject with lots of opinions to factor in, so also appoint a project sponsor that can arbitrate and make executive decisions. Oh, and never forget to allow for a brand launch in your budget planning. It's an element that some organisations forget about and has big implications on budget and planning. Grey Matter have worked with a number of organisations in defining, reshaping and strengthening brands. We have worked with challenger startups that have used their brand to support significant and accelerated growth. And we've also worked with market leaders like Audi, BP and Advance to maintain a leading position in a competitive market. Over the years, we've developed unique methodologies and approaches which enable organisations to jump in at the relevant stage of their brand maturity and business evolution, so we can bring relevance and context to the process very quickly. Ultimately, we're very passionate about branding and always excited about working with ambitious organisations. And with ambitious organisations, there's always a great spirit of collaboration and partnership. Quite simply, you'll have a great story to tell. Our job is to help you discover it. It's a very rewarding process to go through. As an agency, we're very inquisitive in nature, so we'll invest the time in getting to know you to a point where we can have an informed opinion. At this stage, and in the nicest possible way, we can be the protagonists in the room. As an example, if you say that innovation is a core brand value, we'll ask you to prove it. After all, that's what the market will do, because once we can prove it and evidence it, the market will believe it. We're there to help you unearth the brand truths and a proposition that will build trust and loyalty. We also pride ourselves on being relevant. Brand narrative has become such an important part of content strategy in today's world, regardless of what sector you're in. A good example of this is GDPR compliance and the shift in data ownership from you, the company, to your prospects and customers. Ask yourself what brands are most likely to say opted into and engage with. 
those building a value-based relationship, or those continually marketing products, benefits, features and prices. That's why retail banks are moving away from marketing credit card offers to advising you on how to shop securely online, the latter being more aligned with the brand values of putting the customer first. It's really quite exciting how the comms agenda is going to shift to having brand at its heart. Our own brand values are that we're committed, collaborative, innovative, progressive and genuine. They're values exhibited every day by everyone at the agency. It's a set of values we recruit against and shapes how we nurture and develop talent. And our most successful business relationships are the ones where we work with like-minded organisations. So our brand is intrinsically linked to our own sustainability and growth. If you are interested in talking further or just need a piece of free advice, drop me a line or ideally drop in for a coffee.